As I said, I just want to take a few minutes and, and talk about the pandemic that we're all facing right now and just give an overview of where we are and then I'll turn it over, as I said, to Ms. Soltis and Mr. Davey. Uh, on March 11th, and it seems that that's, uh, that date is at least a year or, or so behind us, but ironically, it's only a couple of weeks ago, uh, where the province announced that the COVID-19 virus was now a pandemic. And that changed the entire landscape of this virus, our province, and our city. On March 14th, the World Curling Federation cancelled the Women's World Curling Championships here in Prince George. And this was without question the start of a cascading of major events being cancelled in our city. And I think to date we're somewhere around 15 to 20 major events uh, that have been cancelled uh, between now and uh, late May, early June. From there, we went to another phase of the pandemic. The provincial health officer, Dr. Henry and Minister Dix, put orders in place to close civic facilities, schools, casinos, pubs, bars, restaurants, and limiting gatherings to 50 people, and a two-meter social distancing order. Every one of these are being implemented throughout the province and, of course, right here in Prince George. It's important to know that we're taking direction from the province's medical health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, and her words, uh, this is a critical time to build the firewall to fight the virus and flatten the curve. Other important measures were taken over the next few days. Some of those included free fare for transit riders and the mandatory requirement to board transit buses from the rear entry. It also had given us an opportunity to take a look at our own operations, and I'll get to those in just a moment. But I will say that City Hall is still open, and that includes our service centre and other departments. And as you see, we're conducting our public council meeting at council chambers. We're doing social distancing and making sure that we follow Dr. Henry's orders. I've asked our city manager and Mr. Babich to look at other means to conduct council business, but not in person. So if we get to the position where we need to conduct council meetings in another uh, form, uh, Mr. Babich and Ms. Soltis will uh, let us know what that might look like and the steps that we have to take to be able to carry on with the operation of the business of the city. I would also suggest that you tune into Minister Dix and Dr. Henry's press conferences that are held daily. They can also be accessed on various news agency apps. The Premier and Minister James are giving updates as well. And it's also important to watch the Prime Minister's press conferences to get updates from a national perspective. These news conferences provide us, the public, to hear firsthand the stage of the virus and steps the federal and provincial governments are taking from traveling restric restrictions to economic assistance. It is vitally important to wash your hands, avoid touching your face, practice social distancing and cover your cough, and stay home if you're sick. As Dr. Henry has said many, many times, these are not optional. They are a requirement, they are mandatory, and it is vitally important that we follow these steps to protect ourselves and our family. Things are changing by the hour. Make sure you take advantage of the various platforms to get information, and I'll refer back to those in a minute. As you know, the city has also closed all of our civic facilities, which includes pools, rinks. We have our civic center that is closed, pubs, Restaurants are all closed, uh, and they are trying to provide business uh, in a certain manner, particularly with most restaurants are providing takeout service only. And this is an indication of what this particular pandemic has meant to our city. I want to give you just a couple of uh, locations where you can access more information. You can refer to our webpage at www.princegeorge.ca backslash COVID-19. This is where we consolidate recent information, updates from the city, links to health and other local organizations, information on what city facilities are closed and what the city is continuing to do. You can also visit our homepage, sign up for notifications via email and follow the city on social media, especially Facebook and Twitter. Over the next few days, we'll be conducting various media uh, interviews. Uh, those interviews will uh, start tomorrow morning at 7.15 with CBC uh, and they'll be more announced throughout the next week. One of our primary objectives at the city is to get the information out to residents so they understand what's happening not only on a provincial level but also uh, right here at home. 
And I can't stress too strongly that our direction is taken by Dr. Henry as the provincial medical health officer. Uh, but it's also important to know that there are a tremendous amount of things happening and have happened in the last 48 hours with respect to national and provincial announcements that, as I said, not only affect uh, our health uh, and the processes that they would like to see us take, but also uh, from an economic perspective. I want to leave you with this, uh, and it is from Dr. Henry. Uh, she has said, be kind, be calm, and be safe. And remember to check in on your neighbours. Uh, this is a community that we know full well will step up. I, I would also like to uh, say a few words about our vulnerable citizens, about our seniors. Uh, it's these groups that I would ask our community as well to pay a lot of attention to. If you have seniors that are living in your neighbourhood, check in on them. Find out if they're doing okay. Buy them groceries. Help them out. Uh, this is exactly uh, what is meant to happen in times like this where we look after our neighbours, we look after our family and our friends. So with that, uh, thank you very much for giving me just a few minutes to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on Prince George. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Davey and Ms. Soltis uh, to talk about the Emergency Operations Centre.